In Hebrews 10, the writer says, Therefore, brothers, since we have boldness to enter the sanctuary through the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has inaugurated for us, through the curtain that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience of our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises faithful. And let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works, not staying away from our meetings, as some habitually do, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So Steve's been in Hebrews and, and talking about some issues and some things, and it's about the new and living way. that He, he spoke about that last night. And, and I wanted a starting point. You know, we're, we're here to care for each other and to encourage one another and sometimes even provoke one another into doing something other than that, that we would want to do. You know, I had an experience with God that I was once one way and I left the room and I was another way. And, and from that moment forward, I guess it's my desire because it's his desire to try to encourage other people to participate in his life. You know, because we're all ambassadors to Christ, to be reconciled back to him, to participate in his life with an undivided heart, an undivided body. He's an undivided God. In, in that unity, just wonderful and beautiful things happen. And, you know, we're here for each other, and the gifts and everything that he's given us are, are really here to help each other. So I guess that would be the starting point, is that we're supposed to be caring for one, one another. And I, I've, I have wonderful opportunities to... I mean, they're interesting opportunities. I, I, you know, it must be from him because it, it certainly people come to me with many, many different issues and problems. Who am I other than I make myself available and willing? I went to a Christmas party from school and I was sitting at the t a table full of food and everyone was surrounding the table and the Lord spoke to me and said, only if they would sit down with us and be, be intimate with us, right? Because they, they were drunk, and that, that's, that's fine, you know. Just disengaged, you know. I, they wanted me there, and I don't really know why they wanted me there. But he wanted me there, obviously, so he could, see, he could give this thing to me that he wants me to talk about. I've had the opportunity to talk about this from time to time. But, you know, the topic is the table of intimacy. And, you know, if, if we can get people to sit down together at the table... Yeah, he, he began leading me through that, that thing at that table only if they would sit down with us. And I was alone at the table. I left. There was, there was a series of, of events. You know, I, I left that evening. I, I went home, and it was, it was a strange night, in and out of sleep, dreams, visions, that type of weird stuff, not really knowing what to make of it. I get in my car the next morning. He, he led me to just to drive around a little bit. I put some Jason up to up to nine, and kind of that spirit of intercession fell on me, and I began to weep and just kind of just be like, you know, how do we get people to come to that spiritual place of life? You know, it, yeah, it, it's in the natural where we all come together, and engage, but it's also a spiritual place. Mm -hmm. So how do we how do we get people to actually sit down? You know, so and that and then the next song led into the table, a song that he sings called the table. So now you, now God, you really have my attention. And, and, the, and the lyric says something like, he's calling us home to the table. I go to a men's meeting, and I kind of, it was open mic night, so I go up and I'm chatting about some topic, and one of my buddies says, you know, you really need to speak on that somehow, and you develop that, because I think the Lord's given you something, you know. So the following Monday, I get an email from, from like some church leaders thing, you know, it's subscribed to on the table, reimagining authentic community. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. So he's really trying to tell me something. And in the meantime, I, I had a friend who was reaching out to me, a, a bunch of different friends. And there's a, there was a level of, like, no authenticity in terms of, like, I want what you have, Mark. Well, I really don't really have anything other than that he dwells in me. So you can have that too, but it's not something I can really give you. We, we can spend time intimately and share and engage but it's something that you have to be willing to put your cards on the table. So that's, that's the premise of all this. Does that make sense? Can you read 1 Corinthians 12.25, and then Romans 3.22, and 
And then 2 Corinthians 5.21. That there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. So the members, should, we should care for one another. Mm -hmm. There should be no division. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. We, we are the righteousness of, in God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So, so since we are the righteousness of God in Christ, you know, he has made us righteous. We've all come to him, and he's covered us with his righteousness. We're, we're his son. The Holy Spirit's in us. We're walking in a new living way. Why then do we do the things we do? It, it become, my, my point, my thought is, is because we're unwilling. And our unwillingness makes us unworthy. I think there's a, there's a key point of being worthy and doing stuff, and being, because we're unwilling. So... Uh, Colossians 1.10 said that you might walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. 1 Thessalonians 2.11-12 As you know how we exhort and encourage and charge every one of you, as a father does his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. And in Ephesians 4.1 I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech that you walk worthy of of the vocation by which you were called. So the guy comes into the wedding feast and he's unwilling to put the garment on. So because he's unwilling, he, he has to go, right? And he's invited more people in who are quote unquote unworthy, but they're willing to put the garment on. So, so we become his righteousness, yet, yet we, we do things, right? And because we're just unwilling, we're, we're unwilling to put that garment on. So if somebody says to me, you know, you know, you're a church man, right? Sure. I, 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 li yeah. I like the way that sounds. I'm a church man. And she says, you know, I had my daughter baptized. Oh, that, you know, it's nice. They all like lined up for communion like pigs going, leak, going to a slaughter. And I'm like, wow, that's, fa that's fascinating. And then Amos, Amos, how do you pronounce it, Amos? He said, you know, I detest your solemn assemblies, you know. So at the same time, these thoughts are concurrently running in me, you know? She says, Does that, am I going to go to hell for saying that? Your humor would be, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so you're already in. <laughs> so, so the table in intimacy leads to these, these communion thoughts, you know, like, you know, communion is that engagement, coming together one another with intimate, spiritual and mental thoughts and feelings in the body. Probably, I don't know this to be true, but I'm guessing. If we did a, a, a historical study of how the Eucharist and the Mass and Thanksgiving all laid out, it probably wasn't the way it was back in the day, right? So, you know, so Jesus, Jesus washes the, the disciples' feet, takes his outer garment off, and he has his inner garment on, representing more of a slave, a servant, and he washes their feet. He girds himself up with a towel around his waist to dry their feet later. That's what we're supposed to do with people. That's a table of intimacy. I see it kind of like that's the, that's the full armor of God. That he's preparing them, the disciples at the time, even before they grow up, by, by, by wash, preparing their feet. The preparation of peace. Because the Holy Spirit hasn't come yet. Salvation truly hasn't come either. Because he hasn't gone to the cross yet, but he's preparing them. And he had his truth standing in front of them with a towel around his waist, with their feet clean, cleansed, washed. And that's what we're called to do. Does that make any sense? So these are the thoughts that are going, going through me in terms of trying to prepare for this type of stuff. You know, because traditionally they communion, the Lord's table, is they read the scripture and then we all line up, right? And we take the cup and we take the, the body, which is already broken, but that broken bread, the wafer, is really a blessing because he says this is my body that's been given for you and that's been broken you know it's been given for you some translations turn it into broken that broken bread is a blessing he's come to bless us we're called to bless others you know where the word says for we don't wrestle at flesh and blood but against every blah 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 mm -hmm. i think that we develop strongholds in our life because we don't sit at the table with each other and him in an intimate way 
and unbeknownst to us, we're sitting at the table of demons because we're, we're unwilling to go sit with each other in an authentic way and bless people. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. When we bless the cup at the Lord's table, aren't we sharing in the blood of Christ? And when we break the bread, aren't we sharing in the body of Christ? Yes. First, First Corinthians eleven twenty through twenty five. When you meet together, you are not really interested in the Lord's supper. For some of you hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? Or do you really want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? What am I supposed to say? Do you want me to praise you? Well, I certainly will not praise you for this. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So my dear brothers and sisters, when you gather for the Lord's Supper, wait for each other. If you are really hungry, eat at home so you won't bring judgment upon yourselves when you meet together. I will give you instructions about the other matters after I arrive. Can you go back to 1 Corinthians 10, 17, then, and then read for a while? Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Look at the nation Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices sharers in the altar? What do I mean then? That a thing sacrificed to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to become sharers in demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are not stronger than he, are we? This is not like a communion message. It's just a message of thought. 